Now we're going to talk about potential contributions made by technologies for the reduction of greenhouse effect gas emissions in terms of re demand and supply. And in order to illustrate what I'm saying, I'd like you to focus on the uh, energy industry, which is really symbolic for uh, the current situation and the speeding up of the process. First of all, demand is increasing very fast for electrical power. This means that there will be huge investments in the future. Also, this uh, industry is the first one impacted by the shortage uh, of uh, fossil fuel resources, it is the first industry of fossil fuels are the first contributor for electrical power production, representing 45% of uh, gas emissions. I'd like to submit an example so you understand what the conditions would be for a smart transition, a transition that would allow us to adjust to the changes I have just described, while remaining on the same level of quality of electrical power supply, rationalizing future investments and reducing emissions. Many recommendations have been made to meet this objective. First of all, look at this slide illustrated by the Desert Tech vision, which did not go to fruition regarding the deployment of uh, intermittent uh, renewable energies in Northern Africa, in Morocco especially. Here we're talking about renewable sources, but also the nuclear power considered as zero emission or technologies where carbon dioxide is uh, captured and stored. But there are also instrument and measurement solutions, market solutions, uh, carbon quotas, uh, trade uh, of permits, uh, sub subsidies, etc., or national markets with orientation towards renewable energies in the energy policy, and uh, also uh, the uh, solution whereby France will divide by four its uh, emissions uh, versus the, the uh, 1990 emissions, or the solutions discussed during the future climate conferences. There are technical packages uh, being uh, offered, uh, energetic efficiency, smart grids, uh, smart uh, water, smart uh, town, sustainable town, electrical mobility, biofuels, centralized grids, decentralized grids. All of these proposals are actually a large, not of uh, political and technical solutions, except that we have to find our way around and take in consideration long-term visions whereby we can reconcile time and space scales. We take in consideration the systemic aspect, meaning that we don't want to uh, bear on uh, one side of the mattress, raising the other side of the mattress, and we have to make arbitrations between the various interests. I'll give you an example, Reunion Island. Reunion Island wants to be 100 percent renewable by 2030, and it has an ideal situation to develop renewable resources. So if we consider models on the long run to, that can be developed, technological offers, for instance, one scenario could be suggested, the, ones you're, the one you're looking at now, using abundant natural resources coming from the ocean, a thermal conversion of ocean water, for instance, or wind for uh, windmills, sun for photovoltaic um, panels. Hence, this scenario, which was great to begin with, or rather based on fossil fuel combustion, coal being imported also, and uh, oil resources will progressively become greener and become more virtuous. 
I don't want to comment the graph, but rather I would like to ask the following question. Once the scenarios have been elaborated, which are the technical conditions for their implementation? Because we need to understand that the systems uh, they imply will be complex. Take, for instance, the power grid. We want the uh, power system to be reliable. If there is a fluctuation in the load, it must be easy to restore using reserves. This means that we have to reason on the short run, on the short term, whereas the scenarios that have been suggested in the various publications are long-term scenarios. In order to address this matter, we developed a reliability indicator, thanks to which we should be able to avoid the situation shown in this picture. You remember this event, maybe. The uh, European blackout that happened following an incident uh, in Italy in 2003, where there was a power shortage. Now, the technical combinations must be assessed with the uh, available scientific uh, knowledge. And I'll explain what you can see on these graphs showing the uh, how our 2030 100% renewable scenario on Reunion Island, uh, Island matches what would happen during one summer day if the uh, mix of renewable energies uh, were installed such as we have devised it until now. On the left hand side we have a 100% renewable energy mix and if we use the reliability indicator we see that we have a loss of reliability. We don't have enough reserves to make sure that we can uh, match the uh, demand with our supply. You look at the yellow bars, uh, they show the penetration whereby at some times of the day we have a lot of photovoltaic power, but if we don't use it immediately, the photovoltaic uh, power is lost. Basically, it's difficult to store. So we made a constraint in such a way that the reliability that we have nowadays based on the 2010 scenario, remains unchanged, even though we deployed the 100% renewable energy scenario. And in this case, the results are quite interesting, because nowadays, on Reunion Island, the regulator, the, the body that manages the network, limits to 30% the penetration of intermittent renewable energy. I'm referring to solar energy and wind energy. No more than 30% at any time of the day. What we have shown is that the intermittent energy could account for 50% of the energy uh, supply, provided we add 9.4% capacity versus the previous 100% uh, uh, renewable energy that gave no guarantees in terms of reliability. And if on the demand side we ask consumers to make an effort, we do what we call demand side management. Consumers back down and use less power at some time of the day because we know that there would not be enough power at that time. And if we add more storage and efficiency, so we use uh, very efficient systems to produce uh, electrical power, then the result will be extremely interesting. Not only will intermittent energy penetration go beyond 50 percent, but also we will not need to add capacities. We will even be able to decrease the capacities installed capacities. What it boils down to is that if we consider the stakes of global warming, trying to implement systems uh, which uh, are managed with a smart transition to reduce emissions, we can make, we can build technical systems which are quite reliable. We should not simply deploy solutions because they look or sound nice, but we have to envisage their possible lack of reliability. And again, I'd like you to uh, read this quote from the philosopher Pascal. Let us uh, work by learning how to think well. This is the 
basis of policy, poli politics, because otherwise uh, all transitions, uh, it would not be possible to think about all kinds of transitions, but we should think about this when we organize the future.